welcome to today's live podcast interview on Lifestyle with Luke Lynn Tot, the top podcast for corporate health, wellness, and living your best life. And we are going to go deep into the divine masculine and relationships. And as you can see, it's not just me talking to y'all alone. Today, I am joined live by my friend, Joy Rochelle. Joy lives in New Jersey. As you can see, she's right here in San Diego visiting me. We met each other four years ago on Facebook. And I'm so honored to have you speak to our community and to your community. We're also on Instagram on her page. And Joy is an attraction empowerment coach for men. So she coaches athletic men and entrepreneurs beyond to get into their best bodies and lives and tap into that divine masculine. So if you are someone who either A, you have masculine energy, which everyone out there does, you are dating men, you desire to have a healthy relationship with your masculine side, no matter what gender you identify with, this is a podcast interview for you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Luke Lintot. I coach executives to get fit and loved while making money. And to start off, and we just have had a fabulous time during our trip. I wanted to mention we <laughs> went to the beach. We've been doing the same wellness practices together, like meditating. And also we happen to both be vegan, both be into health and wellness, right? And I think what was so great, I was just telling people on Instagram that we are both very raw and real. And that's like why, why when I met Joy in real life, it was almost the same as meeting each other on Facebook, right? Because we're always sharing our the true essence of who we are. So I really value that about you, Joy, and all the great things that you continue to do both online in wellness and in relationships and also in person, right? So I'd love to hand the reins off to you, Joy, to introduce yourself to our community, everyone now and in the future about the great work that you do and who you are. Thank you so much for having me, Luke. Hello, Facebook. Hello, everyone out there. And let's not get it twisted. We went to a nude beach. We actually didn't go fully nude, but <laughs> <laughs> we both have that in common where we love to be free. We love to fully express our freedom when we can and get creative with it. So he was like, you want to go to the nude beach? I was like, of course, I'm down. I love wearing little small bikinis. And if it was up to me, clothes would be illegal at this point. I'm like, <laughs> surprisingly, I live on the East Coast where we layer everything. But like he said, I'm an attraction empowerment coach for men. And how I came into this work, I really was focusing on men from a health and wellness standpoint, my older brand called Men's Wellness Training. And I was specifically working, working with entrepreneurs and senior executives, high-end uh, men who had high-end, high-powered um, positions in life, but were highly stressed. And it's now evolved into more around empowering men within relationships with themselves first, but also empowering them around creating fulfilling relationships and romance um, with women. I usually work with uh, men who are in heterosexual relationships, but still this conversation is universal and inclusive to everybody. Um, and also that can spill over into business and platonic relationships. And I'm, I'm, I'm discovering that men have a lot of pain points around relationship just in general, not just romantic, but also platonic. A lot of men are, you know, isolate themselves. The suicidal rate in the U S really went up going into the pandemic and beyond, which I didn't know that I discovered that doing research for a masterclass I had. Um, so men are really holding in and suppressing and experiencing depression, experiencing isolation, and also have a lot of pressure on them of what masculinity means, right? Mm -hmm. They've been put into this box and this structure and forced to be like, you can't cry, you can't express your feelings, you're a pussy if you do this, you're, you're not man enough if you don't do that. And so I like to work with men unraveling that and really defining what masculinity means to them and also bringing that full expression to their being, to the relationship with themselves and their masculinity, and then also expressing that, how they want to express that out into the world and really uh, creating some solution for the pain points they're having. You know, it could be a relationship, a wound when we get deep around their parents, specifically their, you know, their mom, when they have those mommy wounds, they tend to uh, enter relationships that are not full of love, that are emotionalist. Maybe they're addicted to porn or they just want to have women around for just like sex or they love like really strip clubs and 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 feeling safe is is keeping their heart guarded because their mom you know hurt them or guarded them from reality of life you know so 
it's 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 been an interesting ride especially on youtube because i'm uh bringing a lot of content there and this conversation just has so many layers uh with men who are men absolutely and that's why i'm so glad that we're having this conversation because i know my own experience being like being brought up in this world as a cisgender man right i was always taught joy that you're not supposed to cry right not just that but even deeper than that i remember when i grew when i was growing up in the community that i grew up men did not boys did not dance and i know it changes wherever you are i have a lot of lgbt friends that grew up in san francisco that grew up in new york city these places where they're really embraced and accepted i grew up in a small conservative town where it was not okay for boys to do really more quote unquote, feminine things, right? And so I know a lot of talent is lost when an entire gender is not even doing certain activities, right? I know in Brene's Brown, Brene Brown's book, one of her books that I love, she talked more about how there, there was actually a story about a boy when he was growing up, he was highly skilled at painting. However, his mother agreed with the father that painting and the arts were too feminine for him to do. So he gave up that that really great passion when he was actually in like fifth grade. Right. And I always wonder, like, oh, my God, like what they're, they're just this is something really important to unpack as someone for men out there, for people that interact with men, which is just about anyone. Right. <laughs> about like really getting in touch with the essence of who you are while embracing your divine masculinity. So I'm so excited to hear more about your thoughts about any of that and beyond, of course, as um, as as it's so important to be you, the bravest thing that you can do. I love that you said that about the dance because my experience, a lot of heterosexual men are scared to dance. Like, you know, <laughs> usually when men are getting married, uh in different like circles i'm in they like in the, the they do wanted to do the first dance they even had to get like dance lessons you know one uh really big personality and and coach and just somebody who's real and raw that i follow and highly masculine on instagram he actually he's taking dancing lessons now to throw him into the unknown of something that's fucking uncomfortable for him and i thought that was so powerful that he's been putting up like videos because it is it, it, there is a stigma just around something little like that. And so I'm experiencing, you know, how can we have a conversation with men that, you know, it's okay to express yourself in this way. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything but the meaning that you're giving to this. And how can you be in a, in a place in a relationship where you're masculine or you're grounded into your masculine, but it's not unhealthy right? You're not trying to, because the old paradigm we're getting out of as a society is like that masculine energy that always wanted to control, not just women, but control men as well that wanted to create some type of safety. So they always have to control everything and take advantage of people. Like that's the extreme where they like start controlling and taking advantage of people. And it's been in a lot of conversation online around like high value men, I don't like to say that because I feel like it places like a price tag on who we are. So I always like to say divine or conscious masculine, healthy masculine. And for me, that's the type of man who is comfortable in his skin, who is okay with being um, understanding that he has a feminine side that he can express, but also enjoying the invitation from the feminine to be free, to be a little bit more playful. Cause we know that masculinity and masculine men, they're more focused, they're more clear. And I think that's important to have that because we're also experiencing a wave of men who are highly passive, you know, it's been, that's been called simp and beta, you know, in this culture, in this dating culture where men like that are being ridiculed for not being able to make decisions and be focused and know how to lead a relationship when they're in a romantic relationship or even like just plan a simple date, you know? So we are having, we are, I'm, I'm seeing like these two struggles with men who are in that alpha, that strong, like alpha, your masculinity is like overtaking everything and you can't even open up. You're just so rigid and contracted and you can't get comfortable because you're so scared of doing anything that's too feminine or you're so you're too scared to let a really a healthy woman into your life that you start to have these these different patterns and not letting anybody in 
if we go into attachment styles being like the of uh, the typical avoidant, mm -hmm. you know, um, and yeah. then we're also facing like the problem of and I'm welcoming both men in where the men who are completely passive and they're in these relationships with these highly masculine women who are controlling them or and stepping into the role of like a mother, you know, where and then that like takes the the fun out of the relationship and the joy out of the relationship, but they're too scared to like get out of that type of situation because they think they're going to upset somebody being like the nice people pleaser, like extreme people pleaser where they're sacrificing their own needs and happiness and fulfillment for the sake of other people and not just in romantic relationships, but in their friendships and in, 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 in their jobs and their career. Um, so it's, it's been interesting to see how those pain points are really like cropping up with men. And I am a stand to let's do something different. Let's have this conversation and um, I guess people look at me that I'm different, I guess, because I'm a woman being willing to step into these conversations with men. And I've gotten a lot of pushback on YouTube uh, around this, but I, I have such a love for masculine and I know how the world changes when a man step, steps into his divine masculinity or his healthy, conscious masculine absolutely it's so very important i know in my own story joy i used to water down who i was and try to be what i thought the divine masculine should be which was inside of a small little box right growing up we men are often taught you can't wear high heels you can't even growing in my era in the 90s you can't go blonde right you can't put on makeup like these types of things were exclusive to females that tend to have a bigger box if you will right in in those things women can wear men women women typically if we if we talk about gender um, stereotypes can wear pants and they can wear skirts right mm -hmm. and there are rules of course that for each of the genders that are very, you know, constraining. And I know for me in my own experience, it's been about doing that reprogramming, doing the hypnosis, and also connecting with masculine figures that also embrace who I truly am. Having grown up and having seen masculine figures that did not embrace that, that beauty, that essence, that is very truly masculine, right? And it really does depend on what culture you're in, right? I remember when I was in college, a lot of my friends were from the Middle East and they were or Persian. And in those cultures, being masculine, you dress up a lot or in different parts of the USA too, right? It's very different than what is seen as masculine right now in certain parts of the United States. Yeah. And so I wanted to invite y'all to really define what that means for you. You are in charge of those beliefs and not just that. I'm curious more be, more about that. Like you just mentioned, like that there are past, there's there's this wave of passive men and partners, right? And I'm curious more about that balance between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Like when when that balance is out of con, out of harmony, what like what have you seen with your clients and what steps for the people out there that are struggling with that that toxic masculinity that was a huge part in my master's <laughs> program that we healed those of us that have dealt with it is is like what what has been going wrong with people that you've been working with and what strategies can people out there do who are dealing with a man who just doesn't even know what's going on he might just shut down he might not share what you know all of his feelings because maybe he doesn't even know what those feelings are right because he's been stuck in that small box for 50 plus years what have you any anything coming up for you in terms of that uh there's so much coming up for me there was actually one couple i worked with both of them um teaching both of them separately but also like co uh, uh couples yoga as well and one thing i dynamic i saw when they started is like the wife sometimes would like ridicule the husband in front of me. And it was so embarrassing. And I almost even felt awkward too. Sometimes she would make fun of him with different postures, blah, 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 blah. But what I noticed when both of them were doing dead, since both of them devoted their, their, their time, their energy to their own inner work, and then would come back as a couple to do these sessions with me, I noticed that there was starting to be a switch in polarity 
there she was starting to soften up as she deepened like her yoga practice with me and we did all types of yoga we did some, some, some like like some sculpt stuff we did some hatha yoga we did some power yoga and same thing with him i did a lot of stretch training with him a lot of like just opening his chest uh just uh releasing his muscles in any way um really tapping in to have him express himself on the mat on the yoga mat when and, and and he would tell me things that sometimes he wouldn't tell anybody else. I imagine that it was hard for him to express. So one, I would say, I know it's scary, especially for men out there, but be willing to do the work on yourself. Be willing to go yes, into man. that scary place of, if you know, if you notice and you're having a problem and these patterns are coming up in, other, in any areas of your life, I have experienced that the men that have come to me, they wait until the wheels fall off until everything is fucking like broken down to their last resort mm -hmm. because the masculine want to find their own solution first. And I, 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 I honor that and I understand it, but it gets to the, it gets to a point where your pride can get in the way of that. Your ego can get in the way of that. Again, defining uh, the, the masculine thing. Like I can't have anyone help me because it's too masculine. So I, my first step is being, if you notice a pattern that you want to work on and something in your life that does not seem right and you're blocked around, be willing to get, to get support, to seek support. And we know when people put their money down to get support, they're going to step into the work, right? right? It doesn't always have to be, it can be something deeper than going to like a YouTube channel or uh, free content, which is great, but that's only going to take you so deep. So it doesn't have to be a coach. It can be something else. It could be sacred plant medicine. It could be a, a therapist. It can be anything, but be willing to step into that work because we are a reflection of each other. So just you being willing to step into that work is going to shift the dynamic and the vibration of your partner, even if they're not doing work, right? It may get to a point where you expand and grow so much and you might have to make a um, decision about whether you want to stay with this person or not, but don't go, go so far in the future where it's going to bring you into analysis paralysis and you don't do anything at, at, at all. And you think it's met more masculine to be in this suffering and this pain, be willing to get support. And I would also say specifically for men, men love action. The masculine energy loves action. They love results. So what I've have been focusing on now, how can I get, how can I create these little micro actions after we uncover a little bit of shadow work? How can I create um, a little plan, like a strategic plan, even if it's something small and, and give uh, the masculine some micro actions to do so that they can receive, so that they can see the results. The masculine likes the results. So even in doing the deep work of the coaching work is like, how can I give them a little homework to do so that they can instantly um, get some results? And then I help to like validate them, like saying like, great, go, let's move forward with it. What, what, you know, give them some, maybe something they didn't get from their mother or they don't get from their partners, like a celebration just to celebrate the win. Because in my experience, in my own masculine energy, once I get to a goal or change a habit, I'm like, okay, what's next? I want to go to the next thing. And there's something so beautiful about honoring a man and celebrating him when he creates a result, you know? Um, so I would say I would, those two things, definitely be willing to do, to, to, to step into the work and get support and hire support that can help you um, get out of these pain points and this unnecessary suffering. And then do something that, do it, do, take an action. Right. I, I know that it's different because women, we can easily like just talk about our feelings and have we the feminine may just want somebody to hold space, but men don't work like that. You know, so in my holding of space, I'm always like, how can we make a plan, a strategic plan? And I can give them some micro actions along the way so that they can get the results and then their masculine clicks and like, OK, the habits are starting to change. Their conversation are starting to change their perspective and awareness is starting to change and then they can then move forward. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. And I couldn't <laughs> agree more, man, that you need to take some actions. And I wanted to add, for me, it's about taking aligned actions as yes. well, right? Yeah. So I used to, literally when I was in middle school, I tried out for the basketball team, right? Like that wasn't <laughs> a good aligned action for me. However, for many, many masculine people out there, 
that is right for yeah. me aligned action was showing up to my yoga mat aligned action has been connecting with my own coaches right has been reading books that talk more about this right you know all these great things connecting with joy connecting with people that really align with who I'm becoming okay and unfollowing those that just don't right we don't need that negative energy and I wanted to mention too I in the Enneagram exam I am a helper I'm a giver I'm only seven percent of men and I know that a lot of these personality type things including the Enneagram they are influenced by your gender right your who what personality comes out in your world is very hugely influenced by your environment and your personality isn't permanent. So I wanted to mention that you can tap in to those beautiful things that make you, even if you were taught that these things were not quote unquote masculine, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's giving, it's like ho holding the door for someone or yes. a compliment. And then I also wanted to mention that, and I noticed that especially with fellow men who are les who are gay and transgender identified, what have you, non-binary we have a lot of triggers and all a lot of LGBT people, we have a lot of triggers because we have been through different traumas and micro traumas. And you see this with straight people too. You see this Absolutely. with everyone, right? And I wanted to mention they can be backhanded comments that happen over and over and over again. Those micro traumas are the same as one big life trauma, like someone, you know, you were physically abused, what have you, okay, those can actually lock you and make it so that you can't be who you are because of the pain that you experienced during that fight or what, whatever it, it was, right? And so that's why we're here to help. So I want to invite you, of course, to get that help, right? And it might be joining one of us. It might be all those great things that Joy just mentioned. And if you're not ready for one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're if you're just not at that point, right? That's about 97% of the people sometimes that are, are watching these lives. That's A-OK. -okay. I started by getting on my mat. I started by connecting with really great people and once again, reading some really great books, that's part of the reason why I'm writing my book right mm -hmm. now for the many, many, many people out there that need something to get that foundation, right? Not just that, for, I wanted to, and I wanted to talk more about this, about holding space for the people, the yes. loved ones, they might be our own blood, right? They might be our, our partner that is maybe never going to get help, right? Maybe they, you know, they have these experiences and Joy and I ha were having a very rich conversation about the beauty of just holding space for someone that you care about and hearing them out, even if their energy is not matching you, right? And it might be because of those triggers. It might be because they're trying to be, quote unquote, in the divine masculine or what have you. And I'd love to just hear more about your thoughts about that for people that are like, this is great, you know, tell my boo to go to coaching, but he's not going to go. Right. What, what words of wisdom would you have for them? for that you know, um else. i would say you actually can't do that that it might back backfire um a, a really great book i'm reading right now um the masculine in the relationship the man who did the forward um he said something i think it was either him or either in chapter one said something really great about like there's two different ways actually how people go about uh, people go about habits or something like that and one example he was talking about when you, it's like a suggested habit or you make a suggestion to somebody like we, like Luke, you and I could be at lovers and, you know, I want you to work on something. So I, I get you a book and I like leave it in the coffee table, you know, just to like, as a hint, yeah. hint you know, right. Or something like that, where you're trying to like, obviously project or maybe force, force feed a suggestion to somebody. And like Luke said, they might not be ready for it. So it's going to go over their head or usually men, they can get defensive. And so what you get to do is hold space for them and maybe be willing to lean into that tension and have a difficult conversation with them about, you know, what's going on. And maybe even just planting that little seed, not even suggesting they do anything, but holding space and offering like, I'm here for you and we can lean into having this difficult conversation together because I love you. But also if you just want to get some things off your chest about how you're experiencing yourself in these patterns or how you're experiencing 
me in this relationship, you know, let's talk about it. Let's, let's get a little bit more real. Even if you don't want to use the word vulnerable, because it makes, like you said, micro, people have micro triggers and men have micro triggers around being vulnerable, which I have experienced on YouTube. Like I did a, I've done YouTube shorts about vulnerability. And one guy went off on me and told every man not to listen to me that comes to this channel because being vulnerable is weak and that I don't know what I'm talking about. And so um, I think being mindful of when the person you're in a relationship with is 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 ready for that type of to jump into that type of work, but you can't suggest it. So again, I, it goes back to you tuning in and maybe doing your own work. Like, okay, Luke didn't take out the trash and 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 wash the dishes, and this is fucking highly irritating me. Maybe you get to look at yourself. Like, why is this irritating me? And what is it bringing up for me? And being in tune with that. And then also being willing maybe to have a loving conversation with them where you can hold space for them and allow them really to express themselves about how they feel around this. Um, I, I, I would definitely say as a woman in me being in a, a relationship with a man and I wanted them to change like in some other way, shape, whenever I've tried to like project my suggestions on, it backfired because they felt like, you know, they felt like, they weren't ready for that or they weren't, they wanted to seek out their own solutions for themselves. So I would say, go back to why that's even triggering you and why you want them to change and work on yourself as much as you can. And maybe when they experience the change in you, it's going to have them bring up their own self-awareness around it, if that makes sense. And I will also go back to, to talking about what Luke said, align action. This is very important with when I work, have been work with passive men, because usually passive men, they're people pleasers. And so they're mm -hmm. always allowing people to do what they want to do. And they'll go along for the ride instead of being like, well, I want to do this. And how can we, you know, come to some agreement, you know, it's almost like going out with a guy and you, you know, he, he wants, he wants to take you out. And he's like, I don't, well, what do you want to do? Instead of like, joy, I'm planning the date. We're going out at Saturday night at seven. I know you like vegan places. So we're, I'm going to take you to this great plant-based restaurant, be dressed and ready and let's go. Like that's more attractive instead of like, oh, I don't know what you want to do. So I think it's important to especially working with passive men who are who men who are more in touch with their feminine, but it's coming from a level of safety to help them take aligned action with what they want to do and speaking that truth and making those decisions. But at the end of the day, you can't force anybody to change. You can't fix anybody. You can't uh, try to control anyone. So I would say, you know, if you're going to make these suggestions, um, really have a gentle conversation around it and don't be attached to the results. Like usually that's another thing when we make suggestions to the people we love, we're attached to the results and we get annoyed when they don't want to do it. So if you are going to make these suggestions, don't be attached to what the outcome is, what they're going to say, how they're going to respond. Hold space, come back to hold space from a place of love and let them fully express themselves and then take it from there, releasing the attachment to what they're going to do, what they're going to decide. And I wanted to add for a lot of people that are in that masculine energy, we tend to get a lot of negative reinforcement, right? It's yes. just the culture of men, right? Yes. You messed up this, you fucked up that. I can't believe you did this. Now, the human brain remembers something negative eight times more powerfully than a positive comment. So that's why when you get a comment, including ourselves, I got trolled three times with one of my Speedo posts. It affects us, right? We remember it sometimes. And so it's really yeah. important to have those boundaries with, of course, saying those words to yourself as you being your best self, whoever the hell you're dating you're inspiring and you're attracting someone who's at that same level. If they are at a much lower vibration than you, you're actually going to repel them. So you're yes. actually protected if they block you, if they delete you, right? doesn't matter how hot they are, how many followers they have, right? They're, if they don't match you, that's that can be a great thing, right? I know blocking is truly a blessing if it doesn't work out for whatever reason. And I also want to say with that in mind, when you do desire to motivate your boo, whoever they are to, to be their best self, 
positive reinforcement does wonders. I so love that you said if that. If you see your man, including your woman, who your person doing something good, point that out, right? We need, you know, I like to think of thoughts and feedback as like a sandwich, positive growth, positive. I was just about to so, say that. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I learned that in tantric training, actually. Really? To make yeah. sure that the masculine like feels safe and okay. And not like he's, he's, uh, cause it can bring, it could trigger back them like being ridiculed by their mother or, yep. something, or like a teacher, you know? So I was just about to say that, like, that's a way you can have a conversation with something like, you know, I love being in this relationship with I you. Yeah, I love it when you open that door for exactly. me. Exactly. I love it when you dress up, baby. Yeah. I love, you know, all these great things. And I know with men who date men, we get a lot of those, those really like intense comments about how we look, all these great things. Anyone really, anyone, a lot of people get that. But I know for us, we really need to work on that, like giving each other love, bring each other higher. Number two, I wanted to say was we were talking about vulnerability, men and everyone else out there. It doesn't have to be massive. I don't have to share with you on the first date my yes. life's greatest trauma right. and re-trigger myself. I can just share that, hey, I like, I'm plant-based. I also love dancing. I'm an Aquarius. I'm an ENFP. It can be small things, but the, that vulnerability is going to create an authentic connection with you and the other person that you're talking to. And the thing is, especially... Now we're in the lonely loneliness epidemic in the United States. The average American has one friend. But I wanted to mention, I am curious what that number is for men because a lot of men sometimes do end up being more isolated if you're always in that toxic masculine energy where you can't trust anyone. Yeah. And I want you to know that as you can see, this isn't our first rodeo. Like Joy and I have been working with many clients for many years. Like you can absolutely trust us. Sometimes that means, so sometimes being vulnerable means you're just making one little comment below, like one question, right? Maybe it is reaching out and privately privately messaging one of us, right? We're not going to yes. be sharing that with no one. Yes, and I so, like that you brought that out. Yeah, brought because, that up. because I want to mention like, when just because you had a bad experience with someone in the past, and yes, the times that when you were a child, those tend to be the most scarring, that doesn't mean that that will happen to you forevermore. And your childhood and your traumas are not who you are. You you are not your past. So I wanted to just like remind, just remind you out there as you tap into your divine masculine slash your best relationships that there are there are systems, there's healing out there. I mean, Joy and I have been closely following each other from 3000 miles away. And now we've met in real life. And I just wanted to, yeah, invite you to really take advantage of that. You know, we're not in 1982. We can we can really connect with anyone anywhere, anytime. And so, so yeah, anything coming up for you too, Joy? Um, I like that you said that about the vulnerability piece. And like, like uh, Luke said, it doesn't have to be some grand thing that you like expose to say you on a first or second date with this person. It can actually, women love this and women are seeking this because I think everybody's confused in the dating culture right now. It could be something as easy after you're spending a good amount of time with somebody and being like, I enjoy spending time with you. Yes. I really like you. Like, I feel like men are getting, are scared to say that. Women are wanting them to say that. And so everybody's holding back. And I, in my experience, when a man has told me that, it has allowed me to drop more in my feminine. Cause I'm like, okay, I don't have to be guarded and masculine because I think he's going to run away and like abandon me. You know, he actually is expressing how he feels about me. And this is so refreshing. And then I get to be more feminine and playful in my energy because now he's like, I'm clear. I like you. I like spending time with you. I want to spend more time with you. You know, so it can be something like that. And I know that seems like a mountain to climb for some of you men, but I'm telling you, that's being in your mask, grounded in your divine masculine. You you know you want to make that action. And you're acting on it and, and you're saying it and speaking it out into the world and to this person, whether it's a man or a woman, expressing that to them. And that's so and that's OK. Like it, the world is not going to fall apart because you told you actually told somebody you like them, you know, <laughs> yes. so I like that you brought that up. And that's a way to be vulnerable with somebody. Absolutely. Like, I agree. So really, like telling someone you like them, that's huge. 
and even being specific too, I want to add that on Mm -hmm. because people, I love it when people go deeper, right? Yeah. So number two, I wanted to also mention that, especially with men out there that you feel like, oh my God, I had, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of clients who have had men who get triggered by a couple of words and then they do some crazy action, whatever it is, block, they snap at them, they yell at them. It's obviously coming from many times a past trauma, a past person, They might have been reminded of some experience, whatever. And I know when I've spoken to a lot of my friends who date men, men and women and people in general, the first step is often, is this man safe? Mm. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like when I'm meeting men too, that's the biggest thing I'm thinking about when, and whereas having dated women in the past too, that's not as much the first step, right? Because yeah. with the masculine energy, sometimes it goes straight. Instead of being the disease to please when there's a conflict, sometimes it goes straight to the like fight as opposed to flight. And I'm curious for, of course, we we desire ideally most people. Some people like to fight. I'm gonna be real. Like some people, some people like that. I I do find it attractive when that person is raw and real. Okay, I'll be real. I don't like yeah. it if it's just like boring and, and vanilla. And they're just like, whatever you want to do, Luke. <laughs> like, I like it when, it when you're really true to who you are. So it's okay if you're spicy, right? And you just say yeah. what you mean. Maybe it is a disagreement, what have you. And how can how can people out there that are dating, that are with around masculine people, how can they really of course I think about giving that man space, giving him time to reflect or that masculine energy time to reflect, and also being mindful about like processing times for different people being mindful about those those things that they may have gone through like what what steps can people take out there in order to honor that divine masculine whatever stage that person's in and help him that's such a great question um i definitely feel in my experience it takes a a a great level of self-awareness um self-awareness with one based on okay this man needs need a time to process and he's going into his man cave how am I feeling about that in this moment while he's doing that because sometimes men are doing that and they're not telling they're not telling the other person like this came up for me I need 24 hours to 48 hours to process it and then I'm going to come back to you so that we can discuss it after I've like processed it a bit um, people are just like shutting down and then they're like kind of le- like disappearing, you know? So I would say to that one, be aware of what it's bringing up for you. And also know that what, if they're going into their man cave, not to take it personal, that it's my it's nine times out of 10, it's not even about you. Mm-hmm. Maybe he just wants clarity first before he comes back to you and has, has had this conversation I would also say there's a healthy way to allow him to do that and for him to do that. So if he did that and he's gone for like six days, okay, then there's a disconnect there. Um, So either he might be highly avoidant and that's his way of like protecting himself so he won't have to drop into the vulnerable conversation. So then you get to be aware and choose whether if you want to be in a relationship with somebody like that. And also if you've never had that conversation with them maybe have a conversation about it about how that makes you feel and and how can we do something different and come to a win-win situation like i want to give you time actually um john dr john gray he's a phd he wrote um the 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 veteran book like the grandfather of like relationships and dating and uh, relationship dynamics he wrote um men are from mars women are for venus so he has a whole section about how men go into their man cave and how this is wired into the masculine to, to, to process things and, and process things like that. So I would say, first, be self-aware how that made you feel to be willing to talk about it when they come out of it. So and have and be willing to have an honest conversation about it. Three, when they come out of the man cave, don't like just jump on them and go off like, you know, like again, because that may be a micro trigger for them. And now they're going back to feeling like a little boy who's been ridiculed by their mom or by uh, uh, their caregiver from the, from the past. So it's saying after they come out of it, you know, ask them, can we have a conversation about this? And then take it, take it from there. And I would also like to stress in my belief and experience, I don't think masculinity is toxic. 
I think there's to toxic expressions. In my experience, I've seen toxic expressions of the masculine and the divine masculine is completely opposite of that. The divine masculine is completely grounded. They know how to lead. They respect women. They don't want to control anybody. There's a difference between showing up to be a leader and showing up to control. Um, and I mean, that's my two cents on it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I and I also think of relationship as something that you're building together. Yes. Dating is not buying something on Amazon that's already 4.7 stars and all right. that. A person that you're dating is also judging you. This shirt is not judging me, right? I just got it, right? And I get to wear it, right? And so like, <laughs> I loved how you mentioned, Joy, the value of working together and giving each giving each other space, whatever cave you go into, right? And coming back and being aware, right? Because I think we're in, we are in this culture of TikTok and mm -hmm. instant gratification where yes. we think that overnight things should, or in 15 seconds or less yes. right, from TikTok, that it should be resolved. And it's really so much deeper than that. And so that's why, of course, it's so good to have a listening ear. I wanted to add, like, whether it is your coach, it's your it's your friend, it's us, right? We're here to help. And also, I wanted to add, this recently came to me that it's not about, you know, I feel like in relationship, a lot of times, when we come to conflict, mm -hmm. we think about like all the friends out there. Sometimes they say, well, you don't want to settle. You don't want to be with that man or that person because they're too triggered. They have all these issues. Drop him, dump him. Mm -hmm. So, and there's this idea of not settling. And I wanted to invite you to think of this as settling on this person, right? Committing to each other yes. so that you can make each other better, right? Yes. And I know in my own experience, all of that has also started with the self-love, like loving on you and being joyful as a single person. I know we were, we were talking about that too, like how we have been living our best lives, loving on ourselves too. So you're A-OK -okay doing that. Number two, just know that also those those attachment styles and we, we learn more about this in counseling, mm -hmm. they are something that this person learned growing up. Like yes. there's a reason why they're avoiding you yes. because they love you. There's a reason why they're anxious and scared they're going to lose you or they're secure. And you see, and you actually do see, this is from the science of happily ever after, which mm -hmm. is recommended reading in my program. You should check it out. <laughs> but the science of happily ever after showed that studies show that anxious people actually like anxious people. Mm. Avoidant people like avoidant people and secure people lack of secure people. So just like I invite you to also reflect on how are you attaching? How, what, when you really like someone, like you are into them, what I'm just curious, like just reflect on that and know that that's okay that you, you know, not everyone in the world has to be secure attachment. It's okay if you, if you do have avoidance, if you do have, if you do have, you know, all the different ones, avoidant and anxious, but, or you have both, right? And you're okay with it. You can change it. I mean, you can do the reprogramming. Yeah. You're here to help with that. Absolutely. But wherever you're at is perfectly fine. So I just wanted to send you all faith as you keep going, okay? Anything else coming to you? And I also, especially women have been fed this. Relationships aren't fairy tale. Oh, no. We've been fed this, especially through Disney, especially women seeing Cinderella, Snow White, all these rom-coms where it just works out, right? At the end of the movie, right? But I love, I was on it because I ha actually have a coach. I have mentors. I get to do this work. And although I was in like a coaching call yesterday on with one of my mentors around business, the relationships came up. And one thing I love that he said, somebody asked in the, in the, in the coaching call, you know, do you feel like relationships have to be hard? And my coach and mentor so amazing man replied with so much wisdom around no it doesn't have to be hard but there are situations where you are going to come into like conflict into tension and those are the situations that's going to allow both of you to grow right so now they don't have to be hard but they are there are going to be conflicts there's stuff that's going to that's going to boil to the surface that you two get to, like like Luke said, work on together and talk about. We we're living in this fairy tale, especially women, where it's it's this relationship and my dream man, it, he's gonna be perfect and not get mad and not be a mess and not trigger me. It doesn't work like that. And I always say ro romantic relationships or relationships in general, they're holy. 
They're sacred and we get to hold them with so much devotion. When you devote and commit yourself to something, you're in it, right? You're in it. You're willing to be in the ugliness and the tension around it because you love this person. So allow yourself to be in it. And it, you know, make, and I'm not speaking to toxic or abusive relationships. Obviously, if you're in one of those, you get to make a different choice. And sometimes separating is the most loving act you can do for yourself and that other person involved, you know? Um, so I just wanted to touch on that to make sure like we get to reprogram ourselves around finding the one or our twin flame when we finally get into this relationship with this person, the notion that it's going to be perfect and we're not going to have arguments. And that's not how you grow. You grow from leaning into tension. It's like working out and going to the gym. When you build muscle, you're, you're doing strength training to have that muscle fail to get to muscle failure so that it can repair itself and get strengthened. And you can do the same thing in a relationship. When you lean into the tension and come out of resolving the issues y'all were having, it could actually strengthen your bond together and grow you together collectively and also grow you on an individual, uh, as an individual on your individual um, journey as well within this relationship, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention that you can fall in love with the same person multiple times. Mm -hmm. So you see it yes. over and over with JLo and Ben, right? Other people out there, I'm sure you know them, they got divorced and then came right back together. And that all goes back to the fact that your personality isn't permanent, right? And over your lifespan, you will change. Sometimes even after 10 years together, you might not even be the same people that you were when you first started dating. And it's about growing together. And in my eyes, being able to give back to society, right? Like be, be better humans, stronger together. Not just that, I wanted to emphasize the beauty of you enjoying that time that you have with you, right? And so once again, we're fed this idea that once you get married, you have kids, you make 10K a month, that you're suddenly happy. Yeah. And you I know it. lots of people, they got all that and they ain't happy. Right. <laughs> and I want to be real too, number two. Right. That, that like there's people out there that are really exuding this. Drew Barrymore is single. Oprah, Halle Berry was single until about a year ago at 57 years old. She just started dating her man. Yeah. Good for Halle Berry. Okay. Yeah. Amen. They, <laughs> it, can, it can happen at any age, right? And I want to mention too, like I've been through it, right? This is not something that I just read in a book. I was right. dumped after a nine-year relationship and it was devastating as hell, right? And also that I know that that was a challenging time and I've been dumped other times too, okay? And through each of those relationships, I have learned so much and I'm so thankful. I was just speaking with Joy about how every relationship that I've been in intimately, sexually, and even not sexually, right? Whether it's for my whole life or it was for the summer, I learned so much in that relationship. So if you are going through that rough patch, that transition, once again, just like love on yourself, have faith, know that it's going to get better. And only through the darkness, in Chinese medicine, they really believe in this, that you need to actually go through the darkness in order to get into the light, mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of Western medicine, you're technically diagnosed as depressed. Mm -hmm. I believe, I think, I think the threshold is if you're sad for two months or something like that. Sometimes, and I know in Chinese medicine, that's the difference where they actually believe you need to go through a little bit more than two months of sadness sometimes, yeah. right? You're, it's okay. You know, you got, so just being graceful with yourself. And so I know th for me at that darkest time of my life, that meant making some dramatic changes. That meant, like Joy was saying, getting help. Mm -hmm. It meant doing, and of course, started with those small steps, but it also has been connecting with real breathing human beings and people that love me for me. So yeah. I'm just so excited. And I wanted to thank you, Joy, from the thank bottom you. of my heart. We're going to go out tonight. So we're going <laughs> to, we're going to take some more, pick some videos. If you want to follow. And I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, any more words of wisdom you have for the folks out there as we close out? And of course, share your handle if, if yeah. they're vibing with you. Where can they can find you? Yeah. Of course. I would like to close out with enjoy being single. Enjoy yes. the journey. 
Um, and even if you're experiencing a breakup now, I wouldn't say enjoy it, but maybe you can come out of it and being like, wow, like Luke said, all his relationships have taught him something like, damn, what did I get to learn about this? Mm -hmm. And I also want to leave it with the words of my coach, what he said on our call today, he was like, just because, uh, a relationship changes form doesn't mean the love is lost. So you can come out of a romantic relationship with that person and it maybe end up being friends later or or the the relationship is transforming into another form but that doesn't mean the love is lost or you have to hate this person and blame this person so enjoy the ride and the experience and you always get to learn something and grow and and get wisdom out of it thank you Luke for having me this has been an amazing journey even this has strengthened our bond together and if you are uh, interested or more curious about the work that I do and the content I put out there you can find me on YouTube Facebook or Instagram under the same name Joy Rochelle that's J O I R H Y C H E L L E thank you fantastic go right <laughs> ahead and follow joy and that's once again how we connected four years ago and here we are in real life connecting yes. in san diego yeah. number two for any of joy's people i would love to connect with you and for those who do not know me connect with me on instagram limitless underscore luke in our facebook community mindfully sculpted and of course everywhere else i have so many other places to stay connected <laughs> And not just that, if you're interested in diving deeper, if you desire to learn more about what your pathway to health, love, boundless healing success could look like, I'm always just a DM away. Let me know. I care about you, y'all. Have an amazing day. Thank you for tuning into today's podcast. If you liked it, we'd love to hear more. Rate us in the in below. Comment your biggest takeaway if you are here in the now on, on social media or in the future. We'd love to hear from you and we will reply with you and have an amazing Friday and weekend. Well-deserved y'all sending you love from the West Coast. Peace, love, and blessings. Bye-bye.